Hello, and welcome to Children's Chapel Online. We're very happy to have you here worshiping with us today. And we're going to have a lesson, sing a song, and say a prayer. So let's begin by lighting our candle. I always like to take a second and kind of quiet my mind so that I'm here for our time together. Things can get so busy. But sometimes it's hard to slow down for a minute, take a deep breath, and to just be with God and those who, of you who are here. Which reminds me, we light our candle because where two or three are gathered, Jesus is amongst us. Let us begin by saying our opening prayer together. Dear Lord, our hearts are open to you. You know everything that we want, and we can't keep any secrets from you. Send your Holy Spirit to make our hearts clean so that we can love you and worship you forever. Amen. For our song today, we're going to sing This Pretty Planet. We haven't sung this yet uh, this year. And also, uh, a friend of mine let me borrow this beautiful guitar. Isn't that beautiful? See how shiny it is? And I'm excited to play it for you all. So, also, This Pretty Planet kind of ties into our lesson for today, which I'll uh, tell you about more in a minute, okay? I'm sure that some of you know this one and there's some motions to it if you'd like to do those also, but here we go. This pretty planet spinning through space Your garden, your harbor, your holy place Go sun going down, gentle blue giants spin us around all through the night, safe till the morning light. This pretty planet spinning through space, your garden, your harbor, your holy place. Golden sun going down. Gentle blue giants spin us around all through the night. Say till the morning light. How about one more time? This pretty planet spinning through space, your garden, your harbor, your holy place. Giants spin us around all through the night, say till the morning light. It's a beautiful sounding guitar, isn't it? <laughs> all right, let's hear our lesson that has a little bit to do with this pretty planet today. This is a plant or actually grass that I bought today with my youngest daughter, Lila. And Lila, she named the plant. She named the plant Frederick. It says, hi, my name <laughs> is Frederick. We like to name things around our house here. <laughs> and so what I'm doing is I am pruning Frederick. Do you know what pruning means? Let's see. See that? I'm taking that stuff. See, it's not green. So it means to cut away the dead stuff, the leaves and the stems and the branches to help make the plant or grass healthier. So, and if a plant is healthier, then it will produce more flowers, it will produce 
fruit, depending on what kind of plant that it is. As you can see, Frederick, I think you can see it if it's up close, Frederick has lots of dead stems. See those brown ones? So I'm going through and pruning them, removing them, and that way Frederick can be healthier. So did you know that we need pruning also? It's true. We have things in our lives that do not produce good fruit. But there is some really, really good news. Jesus wants to help us do that. We do not have to do it alone. So today in our gospel reading from the Bible, uh, from the book of John, it reads, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit, just like what I'm doing to this plant. We can allow Jesus to help us in our life so that we can remove anything that does not produce good fruit. So what do you think good fruit means? Do you remember when I showed you the blessing box at St. Patrick's? That box that we put food in for people who need food? Well, a Boy Scout made that box. And since then, there have been so many people who have gone and used that box and gotten food out of it. That is producing good fruit. The Boy Scout made something that helps people, and that is what we mean. That's a good example of what it means to produce good fruit. There's an opposite to that, too. The opposite of that would be something in our lives that does not produce good fruit. What kinds of things in your life can you think of that maybe doesn't produce good fruit? Can you think of anything? Don't worry, you're not alone. We all have things in our lives at some time or another that does not produce good fruit. But that is why we have and need Jesus. One thing that came to mind is when I'm selfish. Do you know what selfish means? Selfish means when I'm only doing things for myself and I'm not doing anything for anyone else. That does not produce good fruit. Good fruit comes when I share and when I think about others and what their lives are like and how I can be there for them and not just for myself or only thinking about myself. And so if, say for example, this stem, can you see that? Let me pull it out here. You see that brown one? If this was selfishness, let me get down to the root here, then I would ask Jesus to prune it or remove it from my life. But how would I go about doing that? What does that look like in my life? I'm not a plant. <laughs> I can't actually prune myself, nor would I ever, ever want to hurt myself. Got to be careful with the scissors. No, I would pray and I would ask Jesus to do it for me. I would ask him to always remind me when I am being selfish. Then when I'm reminded, I can change and be loving and share with others and care for others. And what I've found is that if I continue to pray to Jesus over and over about something, then soon he will remind me and change my heart 
where I will not even have to think about it anymore, about being selfish. I will be sharing and loving and caring and a caring person all the time. So if you think something, if you think of something that you maybe want Jesus to prune in your life, Take the next week and pray about it and watch Jesus bring good fruit to others through your life. In other words, you will become a more loving person, and that is what is meant by producing good fruit. See how beautiful Frederick has become after the pruning. Doesn't Frederick look so much more healthy? Our lives can be the same if we allow Jesus into our hearts to change our lives and prune our lives. Think about that. Talk with your parents about it. Maybe this metaphor we're talking about, about pruning, doesn't make sense. Ask them about it. Maybe they can help you understand, okay? Let's say a prayer. Gracious God, loving creator and gardener, prune our lives in the areas that we do not produce good fruit. Bring those areas to light so that we may see them and may offer them up to you so that we can be loving, sharing, and caring people in our world. We won't always know what others are going through, but with your help, we can help produce good fruit so that your love is shared with all creation, all people, and that your garden, your beautiful earth that you have given us can grow in beauty, in health, love, and justice. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Isn't Frederick beautiful? Let us now say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for Children's Chapel Online. Worship with us here each Sunday. Now, may we go out into the world this week and ask Jesus to prune the parts of our lives that are not producing good fruit so that all of our lives can produce good fruit. Thanks for worshiping. Have a great week. Now, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.